Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy New Year in case uh, you, well, I guess I haven't seen you guys since the New Year, so Happy New Year. Um, welcome to Noman Art Jam. Uh, new year, new location. As you can see, I'm in a new space. A uh, little bit of a work in progress, so you'll probably see it evolve over the next several weeks. Uh, but nice to be back here doing a little bit of streaming today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my screen and go ahead and start getting some music here as well. So you guys should be able to hear that. Uh, let me know if there's any issues with anything as we do this. Uh, you know, if it issues with sound, issue with picture. Uh, got general questions about what we're going to be doing today, please let me know. Uh, as you can see over here, uh, we're going to be working a little bit on some sculpts today. Um, I'm just kind of making some new stuff for the new year. So uh, I don't really have a specific plan of what I'm going to make today. Uh, it's probably just going to be, uh, you know, see, see where the sculpts take us, uh, which is kind of sometimes one of the more fun ways to do it. I think I will import a different base mesh though. We've used this base mesh several times in the past but last year, I guess is the right way to say that now. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of switch around and see what we got. Um, let's get one of these base people with uh, shoes. This is a base mesh that I use quite a bit. And, uh, it's probably one of my favorites just because it's very versatile. It's really easy to use and pretty cool. Uh, last year we went through a bunch of different projects from fan art six making some fan art characters making stuff from from uh concepts we've done things like uh metroid and gray fox and all different types of fun characters and so today uh i don't really know exactly what our our prompt is but if anybody has an interesting idea that they'd like to see i'd love to hear it uh and also love to hear from you guys hear how hear how you're doing uh, hopefully your New Year's and your holidays were great, and safe, and everybody's doing good out there. All right. Just making sure everything's going good. Double checking everything. Seems like it is. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as always, I'm going to be starting with this base mesh. Uh, well, not always. We've done different base meshes. Sometimes spheres, sometimes the head, planes of the head. Uh, sometimes this humanoid character. Sometimes nothing, and starting from Z spheres or other things. Um, so today we're going to start with this, making sure symmetry is on. And I think we're probably just going to make a weird alien. I just smoothed that head, and for some reason that's a really appealing shape. So we're probably going to start with something like this, uh, and just go with it. So if you guys don't uh, know or you haven't watched before, I use a lot, a lot, a lot of hotkeys. So I'm not gonna switch between the brush palette here very often. I'm not gonna switch between a lot of the stuff that you're seeing uh, on the a very Akira Kaneda. Um, Julian, hello, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Um, I don't use a lot of hot, I don't use a lot of the brush. Uh, things here. I use a lot of hotkeys. So if you see things flashing around like that, that means I'm very likely uh, just switching a brush or doing something like that. I like what just this generic starting uh, pose is. Switch to our action lines here, our transpose lines. Try maybe a little gesture in the forearm. A little more out of that. Is this music we have right now? All right, we'll get a little bit more of an A pose, maybe. I kind of actually, and oddly enough, I kind of like this T pose, but I think we'll eventually move it to something else. And we're going to keep adjusting this body to something that feels like it's going to fit. I kind of maybe like the idea. I'm going to quickly make some uh, poly groups here. So I'm going to go to poly groups. I'm just going to hit group visible. You can make a hotkey for this, which is something I recommend. Especially if you're going to be doing uh, this type of work quite a bit. And I'll do one for like the legs and this little piece here. Hello from Russia. Hello from Los Angeles. Hope you're doing well out there. There we go. 
So now we've got some easy, quick poly groups. What this does is it lets us easily access a certain part of the sculpture, or uh, not just to view it, but also to be able to um, isolate it, mask it, just make it easier to work on. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, I just like what I, the reason I set these up to begin with was I wanted to focus on the, the side profile of the body. I'm going to try to rotate his direction so you can kind of see what direction or what, what shapes I'm going to be creating here. And this arms were in the way, so now I can get him out of the way pretty easily. And we'll do something that's maybe a little more exaggerated in this kind of, uh, maybe like a gray alien style thing, you know. Uh, let's see, we got a question from Twitch already. Hello, you got one question. Uh, do you have to sacrifice your other hobbies or give up learning new skills for fun, such as learning an instrument, magic tricks, to be successful in the industry? You're starting out, and I want to know if I have to do that or if I can find a balance. That's a really good question. Um, it's hard. It really is difficult. If you're learning a new skill and you know, you're wanting to, to really become... Uh, a master in it you know i think there's the classic term you know thing that I've, probably a lot of people have heard which is uh 10, hours right is what it takes to be a master in something so um i don't believe that's true uh i've talked to a lot of people and, and even uh, you look at like our, our nomen program uh by the time you complete a two or three year program you've put 10,000 hours into being a 3d artist and i don't think that 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 means that you're a master at it right but that means that you're definitely good enough to to feel confident in it um and what i'm getting at is that there's only so much time and i think that's what you're saying as well right that there's only so much time that that's out there and if you want to to get good at something you're going to have to put in the time you're going to have to put in the mileage to, to get better at it and that means other thing other things will will be a sacrifice you know if you're going to put in time to do whatever right then then yeah other things are going to be have to sacrifice but i think that the key and very important thing to remember about that is that that doesn't mean that it has to be forever right it doesn't mean you're always going to be sacrificing ever with that sometimes it's just to get to a point where you're learning or you're more competent or you know to to where you can really begin to enjoy it um or get a job or whatever your goal is like if you're doing 3d or you know learning a new thing as a hobby or if you want to be a professional in it that's really i guess the question right uh, you can see that i have a guitar here i actually picked up guitar over the holiday not the holiday break but the quarantine you know, several months ago and it's something i've been learning and you know learning a learning an instrument learning to play a guitar is is something that does take time away from other things right it is a challenge it is fun i enjoy it but i think you know when i'm playing guitar i'm not doing art right i'm not playing games or doing other things so there is a give and a take to that and i think it is important to to recognize and to, to be aware of that but uh i don't think it has to be so binary as like you have to give up things forever to be successful i don't think that's necessarily true it's just like the amount of time that you spend in them isn't as much you know i've noticed that specifically with like playing video games when i was going to school uh before i went to school i played a lot of video games and still do and did but uh afterwards and kind of you know, during well before a lot of video games during school very little video games and afterwards a lot of video games and it's not that i don't like them or it didn't happen it's just I, I had to kind of prioritize my time to be focused on other things and i think that's pretty normal i dynamesh that whole object which i did not want to do i hope that answers the question i don't know if it necessarily answers it directly but it is kind of one of the things where i'd say like you're not going to lose yourself. So yeah, I see what you're saying. You're afraid that you won't be able to learn to play an instrument, for example, because you'll be spending all your time improving your skills in art, and you just want to learn other stuff just for fun. Um, I mean, I think, again, life is long. I'm in my 30s and learning to play an instrument. You know, many people who are older who have picked up guitar 
my dad over the quarantine saw that I was picking up guitar and thought that would be fun, so he's picking up guitar to learn it. And so it's kind of like, you know. Other thing, if you, it depends on what your goal is. If you want to be an, a professional artist, right, then focus on that first and then get to something else. So I think it's just defining and and uh, staying true to whatever your goal is. There's a lot of geometry here, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. I'm not entirely sure. But I think I've got an okay body shape here that I'm kind of into. Uh, again, if you guys are just joining, this is what we just... No, not that one. This is what we just started with. And then I ended up kind of quickly adjusting our body shape here. Not wildly different, but different enough that we're going to have something fun to start with. I feel like we need a theme or something with this character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, subdivide it a couple times. So there's just some more information here. And we're just going to start sculpting. Often what I do when I'm not sculpting with reference or just kind of making something for fun is I'm going to start uh, looking for happy accidents. So I'm going to just be doing shapes. Right now I'm using the Damien Standard Brush in Alt. And I'm just kind of scribbling, just scribbling across it, right? going making shapes making things that maybe follow anatomy maybe making shapes that go the opposite of anatomy right and just seeing where those things go and what they do and this is sort of what um i would equate to somebody if you're on a piece of paper and you're just doing you know broad sketches and you're drawing around and you're looking for a shape or you're looking for you know that blank piece of paper can be really um, challenging it can be really hard to overcome and so this for me is uh, how do we find that next thing? How do we find the, the thing that we're going to run with? And so often I'll just take the snake hook brush or I'll take a, a build up brush like, and make a shape and see if I like the shape. And often I'm just going to erase it and, and figure out you know what's going on or if there's something I like there. But sometimes something will stick. And I'll say, oh, this is an interesting direction. This is an interesting shape. Let's run with that. Like even this is kind of odd right so maybe we'll we'll take this and we'll run with that for a little bit and just build off that we could kind of go this direction on a character if we wanted to we could do the classic you know, just start pulling out shapes which I'm, this is actually kind of cool so maybe we'll, we'll keep going with this and find something that's creating some motion maybe we'll get some more uh of this out of here some masked oh that's because i ended up ripping that shoulder into a lot of little pieces like the arms out So we're just going to explore for a little bit today. Maybe it's like a statue. Maybe we'll play with some of that uh, clay, maybe, uh, thick skin slider. Maybe we'll do that a little later. use this to kind of say like all right let's focus here we've got this kind of big almost circular but upward gesture so we're going to keep playing with some of that be nice to almost complete the opposite gesture so rather than taking everything and saying this is our theme let's keep doing this after you, you can do that and it will be effective as you can see like it's it's working uh, but it sometimes is nice to do the opposite as well and kind of say like all right maybe we'll bring some of these shapes the opposite direction we can do both too but right now i'm just kind of exploring what these general broad strokes would be you can also hit uh, v which will switch your colors from black to white 
and I like to use that a lot for silhouettes to see what the silhouettes are going to look like of something like this and I kind of want to pull it in this direction so that there's some gesture to it rather than just going from if you do it from the front view what you'll see is it'll just you can make some cool shapes but they're just going to be going like straight outwards uh, so sometimes it's a little better to either take that afterwards and uh, with a little draft meaning like it's going backwards in space right whether you rotate it or whatever you're going to do to it it's just going to give it a different vibe Anytime I do this shape on purpose or on accident, I always think it kind of goes sci-fi, that visor look. It's something we could kind of maybe play with here. It's like doing like something like this. It's like, oh, it's always going to be a demon. For some reason, it's just what my, my head goes towards. Something kind of doom-like. Or uh, Wayne Barlow, who's a, one of the masters of creature design and character design, does such amazing, like, old, simple shapes. So good at them. What about, uh, what about you guys in the chat? Any New Year's resolutions, things you're specifically working on? It looks like somebody was wanting to, you know, get into art, maybe learn some instruments. Something you guys are looking forward to this year. Fresh start. Back into video ga games, this time as art, cool. 3D resin printer, that's awesome. What kind of stuff are you gonna be printing? What kind of printer did you get? for 3d print you got a photon s it's the cheapest hey if you're gonna get into it get into the cheap one and make sure you like it and learn how to use it before you upgrade right that's the, that's the way you should get into anything in a lot of ways This hand is a little weird. So we're going to have to adjust that in a minute.
3D printing is really fun. This is something I have been wanting to get into more as well. Yeah, Disney Infinity. I feel really bad about Disney Infinity. Obviously, the toys will live on forever, but it just such a great set of toys and design and you know, like really cool stuff coming out of those groups. Just now that the, the game is shut down, it's super disappointing. It's some really cool stuff. Great artists working on that too. I didn't really have a specific mindset in these hands, but I think they're kind of working a little better. So I'm going to leave it at that. And then maybe we'll figure out what we're going to do with the pose of the arms. Are we going to do anything with this? It's looking a little squat, meaning it's a little short. So I'm just going to go and go whoop. Maybe a little far. A little far. Especially maybe in here. There it is. And the sequence of events to mask things is a little complicated. Uh, if you guys are watching and you've never joined the Art Jam before and it's your first time, hello. See, I got we got a bunch more people in here, so welcome. And happy New Year to everybody. Uh, today we're just kind of sculpting around and having some fun making some random stuff. Uh, just kind of exploring shapes and uh, going to be having fun. If you guys have questions or you guys have input, uh, let me know. And I'm happy to show you guys uh, process. I'm happy to show you guys tips, tricks, or anything like that. Um, no issues at all if you guys want to ask those questions. I actually encourage it, so please do. Uh, how do you hide other parts to select the upper body nut but not the head? Uh, if you use Control and Shift at the same time in ZBrush, you'll get this green box. That's how you can isolate an area. If you hold uh, Control and Shift, and then you can let go of that, and then hold Alt. If you toggle Alt, that will hide things inside of the box. Uh, when you do that, and I did this at the beginning of the stream, I had basically taken this base mesh and shown an area these for now and then you can go under here and go to poly groups group visible you'll see that'll change it a new color and this is making a new poly group so that now all i have to do is uh, again use control and shift and then i can just click on that and it will isolate that area so poly groups are a really great function to uh do that kind of work i like the lower resolution one So we're just going to, you know, delete the higher one. Good question, though. Yeah, and if you guys have tips or tricks or questions you want on specific aspects of the program like that, no problem. Very happy to answer those. Just getting into beginning into 3D. Awesome. What programs have you... Have you been starting with sounds like maybe zbrush any other 3d packages Core, Blender, and 3ds Max, but not used yet. Nice. That's a good starting. It's a good starting set of things to use.
This is a pretty good warm up. I feel pretty good about this as a starting point. But we can always keep on and um, do some other shapes. And in case you're just joining, I'll give you guys a quick example of what we did to get here. So I'm just going to import another one of those, a, exactly the same base mesh. So this is what we started with, and this is what we got to. Uh, you can also use these little fun features here, uh, which is the slider. So you can slide back and forth, and you'll see that go back to where we were at the very beginning. A uh, question from Twitch that you're not totally sure how to progress from sketch phase in ZBrush yet, but eventually when you get to textures, you want to check out Substance Painter. Uh, I, mean, I think what you probably, you know, the first steps is just getting a little further into, uh, you know, having a more final model. So a lot of the sketches that you see here or that we're working on today, um, you know, some are going to be just sketches and some could be could be going quite a ways further. Uh, so like if I look at something like this is a, a rough model, which is more clear, right? This is probably something that I could at a certain point begin to retopologize or make nice topology and finalize, right? Uh, that's kind of a good starting point. Other ones like maybe this one is probably a little further along. Right? When you get to kind of this point, you could retopologize. You want to make sure that your model is clean, right? Uh, once your model is nice and clean, then you can add new, new topology or, or start texturing it, especially if you want to get into Substance Painter or something different like that. These are some of the projects that we ended up doing last year. Uh, just a couple of these different types of characters. I guess I should have them. Showing some of the uh, pieces that we worked on uh, last season, I guess we could call it. Which is pretty cool. And so we did a bunch of these. Let's see, I'll try to load up some more real quick. We did this character, which ended up changing into a full on scene, basically, which we never really finalized, but something more like this. So doing all kinds of different kinds of stuff. Yeah, similar to ZBrush, this is uh, this is ZBrush that we're using, yeah, today. Um, so it depends on what you're you're looking to do, uh, Shane, as far as like what you're interested in. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways that you can do things, whether you just want to do them as uh, you know just a, a sketch, if you want to get into doing more specific things where you're going a little further. Uh, you know, or if you're doing, let's see, like, this is going to be a full project, which is going to erase that. So I want to save this so we can come back to it. So you can do full characters like this. This one is using a very specific type of thing right now. So depending on what you're interested in, this is fine. We'll just make this a new. Right, you can make characters for whatever it is, whether you want them to be illustrations, whether you want them to be, you know, uh, just really depends on what your what your goal is for this. Uh, for example, the gray fox that I showed you guys earlier, you know, was used to make a final image for, you know, just an illustration. It wasn't necessarily to be a game model or something like that. You can do that, but 3D modeling, sculpting is something that can be done for concept art, it can be done for toys, it can be done for all different kinds of things. So you don't have to go into Substance Painter if you don't want to. But if that's what you're interested in, you want to make your model a little more finalized before you get into to something else. Uh, 
right let's see what was I doing oh, I was gonna jump into making try, trying another one uh, I do have my own twitch I don't usually use it as much but I uh, every Wednesday we stream the art jam here from 10 to 1 pacific time and so we've been doing those for quite a bit now this is one that we worked on last year which was kind of fun sculpting in asymmetry not using symmetry at all in uh, something like this which is a fun a cool challenge to work on something where it's you know you're sculpting anatomy you're, it's more much more traditional feeling right uh, definitely really difficult really really difficult to do this kind of stuff but it's really fun it's really depending on what you're interested in there's just some i'm just opening up things at this point to explore different shapes and one of my favorite ways to do to, if you're getting into zbrush and you're not really sure where to start uh is to sculpt a head and to sculpt a head you can do it a couple different ways and i'll show you those really quickly uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just initialize our ZBrush. This is going to wipe it all out. So any of the RAM and all the tools that were loaded are going to go away. This is important because I just loaded like seven or ten different projects right there. So I don't really want them to, uh, you know, come back and have us crash the program because there's too much stuff loaded or whatever. So first I'm going to load up this project here, uh, which is going to be under, if you hit comma, or you can hit lightbox, which is right here. You go in here there's a project tool or a tab go into the head planes and then i like the, either of these there's a female one and a male one but use the male 128 is the one that i have as my go-to this is a really good starting thing object mesh for you to use uh, additionally if you want to use something simpler you want to start from nothing i go into tool and i load up this polysphere right here if you are a fan of zbrush or you follow zbrush very much you've probably seen uh this before right like you're probably gonna see um that if you've seen people sculpt from spheres all the time right that's that's something that is pretty common and and you're gonna see all the time so uh this is a good one and this is a good one well i'll show you very quickly why why they're good or what's what's good about each of them uh, especially if you're somebody who's getting new so if you're starting with the sphere and dynamesh which is kind of what you're working on or you're saying you're working on i'm going to quickly just go to a mat cap or material that i like to use i like to use some of these they're called l01 or z1234 i found these mostly on uh, zbrush central if you just google zbrush dyna uh, mat caps you'll find a ton of them so i'm going to go into render render properties and then turn on this wax preview you're going to notice nothing happens when I go into Material, Wax Modifier, I can turn this up now. And there's just a little bit of extra warmth that you kind of see on the side of this. It's kind of difficult to see. Uh, but when we start sculpting with more things, you'll actually see it more on something with more planes. So a little bit of warmth. I don't want it to be that high, but I want it to be somewhere in the middle. And that gives it this kind of general, more warm, clay-like quality or waxy quality. So if we're going to start with the Polysphere, I'm going to turn on my Symmetry by hitting X. And then I'm going to go into uh, Dynamesh. I'm going to make sure Dynamesh is on. I'm going to make a quick adjustment in Dynamesh it to see what that resolution is going to be. And that's going to be pretty good. I'm going to go to the bottom level and I'm going to delete my higher resolution. Uh, if you're a beginner and you're just wanting to get into sculpting, what I recommend is staying at a low subdivision level as long as you can. So if we're going to start making a head, what I would do is just stretching out the front of this. Typically, width of or width and height of two, right? If it's a sphere, meaning if we have one of these. Thing. Right, it should be one and a half like this is kind of roughly the 
proportions that you're looking for for a, a head shape. That's kind of what I'm looking for when I pull these apart. Saying I'm going to pull this down. You can mask if you want. If you're a fan of masking, there's easy ways to do this where you can say like, you know, mask, pull this down or angle this out. There's other ways to do it depending on how you prefer to use the program. And I think that's what's interesting when you start watching tutorials or other people sculpting, even, you know, me or other streamers or on Pixelogic Stream or whatever. Uh, everybody's going to have their own kind of way. If you're using ZBrush Core, you might not have that. But uh, that's okay. Actually, in case there's a lot of new people here, I might switch to use something different. Let me just check real fast to make sure I still have it. Here we go. So I'm actually going to pause what we have here, and I'm going to open up ZBrush Core Mini. This is basically the free version. So this is uh, this is the full paid version right here. And right here, this is going to be the, fr the free version. What you're going to see is it's going to have a couple basic matte caps. We're going to have a couple basic uh, sculpting brushes you can open and save. Create a new sphere for sculpting. New mesh, stone mesh for sculpting. Symmetry, simple draw size. If you're brand new to digital sculpting, uh, this is something that I really highly recommend you you using is ZBrush Core Mini. It's free. First off, it's free. So go ahead and open this up and you'll, I'll show you what you can quickly do. Um, you can hit S or you can use this draw slider here and that will change your size. Uh, Core Mini doesn't have a lot of the bigger features, meaning it doesn't have um, subdivisions. That's the key one that it doesn't really have. So it's going to be using something called uh, Sculptress Pro Mode. And so what that means is if I use Move, it'll stretch it. But you see if I use any of the other brushes, it's actually adding geometry specifically wherever we want it to be. Cool. So I'm going to take this Move brush here. I'm going to pull this around. You'll see I'm kind of doing exactly what I was doing over here. These different colors so that we can maybe see the difference of them when I switch back and forth. I'm going to be making this these adjustments to make a general head shape and I can do the exact same thing here. Shape. Um, at this point I'm going to start blocking in the features of the skull so they have some build up brushes, pinch brushes, standard brush. If I take this or even the slash brush is really good for this. You can carve in shapes. Uh, I'm just going to take our standard brush here. I'm just kind of go down the middle. I also use the smooth brush, which is holding down uh, shift. I'm going to use start using this clay build-up brush. You'll notice that the larger the brush size, the larger the geometry is created. The smaller the brush size, the smaller the the geometry that is created. So just kind of think of it that way, meaning I kind of want to add some geometry to the front of this. So I'm just going to a reasonably large brush size here. And I'm just going to start treating it like it's clay at this point. Now the color picker is the actual color for the material or is that the viewfinder color? This color is, uh, is going to be the color of the material. So we can pick the other one was green so we'll do like a blue i'm just going to start sculpting and whenever you're sculpting heads what you typically would want to do is we'll find like you know get this move brush in maybe push this in a little bit go back here and we're going to try to find the skull shapes at the very beginning So if we are looking for skull shapes, this is the, the primary things that we're looking for here. Right? So I'll zoom it in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm seeing here. So we're going to be looking for 
uh, these large bones when we start sculpting. So we're going to start kind of with the uh, zygomatic arch and kind of the front part of the skull. This is hard to do it in the camera. And then we're also going to go here and, and kind of cover the jawline and the front of, of this. And that's the main areas that we're going to focus on first. So go back to our clay buildup brush. That means we know I'm going to keep this right here in front of me. You guys won't be able to see it, but this is what we're looking at. And I'm creating this shape here. Then I'm going to start blocking up this shape and kind of an overall shape. And I can tell you right now, I started too wide. So I shouldn't have started just from the side view, maybe from the front. Something that's going to go over the top. Some of that brow in. If you want, you can sculpt in a nose. If you want to sculpt it more like it's a skull, you can sculpt in this. And then start bringing in some of this stuff. Now, at first, it's going to look kind of like an egg with a bunch of stuff that you drew on it. And this is where I like to come back in with the move brush and just basically take all those pieces that we've blocked in and I'm just gonna move them around so that they have better planes and angles to them. So I'm hitting S. If you see this pop up, that means I'm hitting S. So you can see, hitting S to make this bigger and smaller and just move this stuff around. This is probably one of the biggest and most important ways that I work is that I like to get things laid out. We'll even get rid of some of this. We really want to go for that skull shape. It'll help quite a bit. Uh, a really great starting project if you're getting into this, to sculpting is sculpting a skull. Start with sculpting a skull because it is the foundation of what a head will be be built upon. So this is ZBrush Core Mini. This is a free program. You can download it right now and you can do this yourself if you'd like or follow along. And so I'm just taking all this stuff and going to start moving it around. rounded thing. I'm just going to push that back. Probably do like a coating of clay build up on this so it feels like it's all clay and doesn't have a lot of that remnant of sphere. All right. So we've got our block out, right? We know that this is where our eyes are. This is where our nose is going to be. And this is eventually, you know, going to be where our teeth are going to be. I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush size in here, and you'll, you'll notice that most of this is roughly the same size of polygons. But again, if I go really tiny in our draw size, it will make a very small polygon. So we can add little details if we want to. But working bigger shapes to smaller shapes is usually the way that you want to work. Uh, think of that just like primary to secondary to tertiary forms. So we want to work from our primary forms to our secondary forms to our tertiary forms. So uh, fortunately, uh, ZBrush Core Mini with the way that the brushes work, meaning we're going to use larger brush uh, strokes, makes it so that it's almost impossible to add detail. So you can almost think of it like, I'm going to start my project and never go below size 130. I don't know. What would be a good size? 180, 200. Don't go below 200. And then as soon as you feel like the sculpt is looking as good as you can without going underneath 200, go down to 100 as your maximum size and then go down to whatever the minimum is. All right, something that's going to work good for you. We're going to get some of this in here now. Go back to our move brush. Adjust some of this. Get to pull this stuff out. Uh, 
pull these teeth quite a ways out. What we don't want it to look like is like a mad ball. That's a relatively old reference now, but a mad ball is like a basically a character that's sculpted onto a ball, but you can still tell that it's a ball. Uh, and we don't we don't want that because that's kind of the opposite, right, of what we're looking for here. Is we want this to eventually look like a skull. As long as we're sculpting, again, this is a free program. This is a ZBrush Core Mini, so you can download this right now if you want off of the ZBrush for Pixelogic website, uh, and you can go ahead and get started making your own stuff. Uh, it's very simple, it's very easy. There's not a lot of features in here, uh, and I think that's a good thing, especially if you're interested in this, because people often get confused or they get, you know, worried that they don't know all the features of of the programs and that's really not that important when you're starting it's it's about understanding the basics of sculpting it's understanding the basics of of making an object and how to make it how to make something look good how to make something read well um, it's not about knowing what all the buttons do especially even uh, when when we're looking for people are applying to a nomen program, the number one thing that we look for is, is just basic artistic skill. Do you, do you know how to draw? Do you know how to paint? Do you know how to sculpt? And uh, it ends up being the number one thing, the most important thing that we look for. Being an artist is the first thing. And so if you are an artist, you can definitely you have an interest in sculpting or you've, you've sculpted before. Uh, it might take you a minute to kind of get with the navigation and understand how how the program itself actually functions, but I would have no doubt that you could come in and make something. So we've got a decent little skull block out here. We could use some of these other features if we want, if something gets too bulbous or you're having trouble controlling it. I use this H polish brush here, and this will kind of flatten the plane make uh, if, if you're a sci-fi hard surface fan you can also come in here with a smaller brush size on voila we can start turning this into Terminator pretty quickly these nice sharp edges there's a snake hook brush which is the classic we're gonna make some horns character So these are great for this. It's also really nice for just large movements. But notice that because it's adjusting the polygons, I can't really do these large movements with the snake hook brush because it will turn it back into nothing because it's adjusting the topology as we use it. So it's more for adding features. Specifically in Core Mini, it's more for adding features. If we're in uh, the main ZBrush, which I'll switch to this so it's easier for, this, for us to see, that brush can be used for overall large movements but not in core mini. That we want to use the move brush. And that's like saying, okay, we maybe I've got a good start to my skull, but maybe the proportions are off or there's something I want to move or something needs to be bigger or smaller. This is where you want to take that and say like, this needs to actually be a little further back. That's not adjusting the uh, topology. It's not adding any topology here. Inflate is going to inflate things. Note that it also doesn't adjust the topology. And then Slash is a pretty cool brush. Used to make all kinds of little cool details. It'll also be a really great sketching brush, which we'll get into in just a minute. Pinch is going to pinch things. Makes sense, right? Pinch things be really great as well for creating sharp or defined or animated shapes which is a great tool and then our standard brush is pretty great just for general so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a little bit more work my clay build-up brush at a smaller size 
it's going to dictate where some of this stuff could go and maybe block in generally where some of these teeth will go or could go. The draw slider is numbers. Oh, how do you change to dots? Or maybe that draw size option is only available in Core Mini. Um, in Core Mini, I believe it's only dots. In this one, it is uh, numbers. This is the full program. Core Mini just has dots. But it does have numbers next to it as well. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to help you guys work through the program or work through problems that you're having. Or questions. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use this slash brush at like a much smaller size. And what I like to do with this is we're going to start transitioning this in a minute to be, probably be more of a face rather than a skull. Selecting to mask, is there a way to select all around? As at the moment, it's only masking the parts that I can see. Hmm. Well, what do you mean by saying selecting all around? Everything. You just got to zoom out and just do everything. That's the easiest way. How would you carve out the empty spaces? Uh, do you mean like making a hole in something? I believe with this you can just make a hole. I don't know if Core Mini is going to be great for doing that because it doesn't have all the features, but. Blender, uh, not today. We're using ZBrush Core Mini and we're using ZBrush. Oh, I don't know what the right term for that other one is, but I made the whole, whole program. Want to mask the arm to extend it, but selection is only masking the front of the arm and not the back of the arm. Um, you might have a setting where if you go under alpha brush, auto masking, back face mask. If this is on, it might be when you're masking, especially if you're brushing, not capturing everything. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Uh, what I like to do is turn, go to W, E, or R, move, scale, rotate, especially if you're going to try to do a limb. Turn off this button. You can have this one on, but I like to turn this off. And if you hold down control and click and drag, you'll be able to mask the model based off of the topology. So if you're doing something with an arm, usually you can grab and, and grab the arm that way, and it, it works pretty good. How can you be working with reference images top and left? Um, I usually have them on another stream, on another screen. Uh, in the full ZBrush, you can use this see-through feature, which is actually going to go to the your desktop or whatever's behind it. You can do that. You can load them into Spotlight. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that for sure. But I don't think you're talking about this. This is not a reference image. This is the silhouette. All right, let's go back in here. So now that we've got this, we're going to be sculpting around a little bit. And uh, just we've got some teeth in here. This is where the teeth would be. We're going to use our slash brush to start defining some tighter areas here. We can use it to even carve in if we'd like. Right, it's good at this kind of stuff. Uh, we can, at this point, you can also use your clay buildup brush and begin to build up something. So let's say we want to fill this cavity. I would use the clay buildup brush. Smooth it, maybe. We could start even building some flesh on here. Make this a little better for an eye shape. Any 
good Wacom navigation. Uh, I think that ZBrush is actually one of the easiest programs to navigate. Uh, all you really need is your pen. If you are on the outside of the screen, you just click anywhere outside of the model and you'll rotate. That's your rotation. Uh, if you hold down Alt while you're clicking anywhere outside of the model, you will pan. And then to uh, zoom, this is the most complicated one, but it gets easier the more you do it. I'm holding outside here. I'm now going to hold down Alt. You can see it's going to do nothing, but as soon as I let go, well, there we go. That's what it is. All right, so I hold down Alt, click on the canvas. You're going to be panning. As soon as I let go of Alt, I'm now zooming. I can't pan, so click, hold Alt, click. You'll be panning. As soon as you let go of Alt, you'll be zooming. That's the easiest way to navigate around ZBrush. And the great thing about that is it means you really, even though it sounds complicated, it's not a way that other, other packages, you know, uh, navigate around their viewport. Uh, all you need to do is have a pen and the Alt key. And you can quickly navigate very fast and efficiently around things uh, once you get the hang of it. But it is awkward. I have no, no a lot of people who really struggle with it at the, at the very beginning, and that's totally normal. Uh, but it is pretty user friendly once you get the hang of it. Uh, yeah, it looks like you can use control as well. I didn't know that. The heads up. Control can also be zoom. I sculpted my quick. Let's see what I had here. I had this sort of sphere, the socket that I sculpted a little kind of ball in. And then on top of that, I started sculpting some eyelids. What would I would I recommend sculpting with perspective on or off for three D printed piece? I always sculpt with perspective on. I know there's some you know people who don't necessarily like the ZBrush perspective. I get it, um, but I think for me it's one that I'm always using, just because I would rather at least try to simulate it rather than have no real idea. Um, that's the best way to do it is with perspective. I really like the clay buildup brush for those of you who are just starting. The, the reason I like the clay buildup brush is because it adds really easy layering. Meaning, if I do these sculpts like or these brush strokes I'm doing right here, uh, if I put one on bottom, I can put one on top of that, and that looks like a weird mustache. But you can see what it's really good at is taking a form and then putting another form on top of that. And that's a lot of how sculpting is: is knowing which forms are on top and which forms are on bottom. I can take this and say, okay, this top lip, at least for my first brush stroke, is going to be here. And I'm going to start defining you know, what these shapes are the further I get into it or, or how it's really going to work. This way, I use my slash brush too to get in here. Uh, we are using ZBrush Core Mini today. It's a free program. Uh, it's like ZBrush, with same makers. This is the full program of ZBrush. Zebra, this is ZBrush Core Mini. And uh, it is just a free program with limited features, but there's kind of showing that you can do a lot of the same, same things if you are interested in sculpting, digital sculpting especially, um, getting into 3D. It's a free and easy to use program where you can get into it and try out some stuff, make some stuff. Uh, just have fun. 
so we were starting with a skull you can see we can go from a skull pretty quickly to something that would have more character and more face to it unless you're making a skull person then then you're you're already there uh obviously you can have fun and we could just you know voila. we have now made a western But uh, right. This is the fun part about it, is you can do really anything you want. Um, ZBrush is super fun. I love playing with this program. But yeah, if you're interested in it, this is the free version. We'll hop back here in a second. Uh, if you're interested, if you like this and you want to go a little further and you say, I like digital sculpting, I want to try something different, uh, ZBrush Core, not Core Mini. Mini is the free one. ZBrush Core is available for, I think it's 150 and it has more features than the free one. It will have less features than the full one. Though. So go ahead and take a look at what you're interested in. This is the full program. Now he just sculpted a, basically from a sphere in Core Mini. Here we could do the same thing, but I wanted to show you guys some of the other things that it brings along and why it's nice to have these other base messages. So um, in the projects, in case you guys are just joining, under project there is head planes and there's a head plane right here. That's what I've loaded up uh, and that is here. Now this is great because it's a great base mesh for somebody who is wanting to practice sculpting heads from a solid foundation, right? Sculpting from a sphere and sculpting a skull like we did here uh, is a really good practice for you to get into because it helps you understand, you know, what it is that makes a shape a shape and, and what you need to do to make that, right? It's important to do. It's a, it's a really great exercise to try. When you feel somewhat comfortable with this, like you could do this, uh, feel free to step up into something like this. This is a base mesh, which some people, would, uh, it's called an, uh, a, a sorrow head and a sorrow head or a planes of the head. And this is basically something that breaks down what the large features of the face are. If you Google planes of the face, you'll see a lot of these. Uh, Philippe Ferro has a lot of different books on this as well. Uh, and many other artists do. John Brown has some, uh, one of the instructors at Noman who teaches our sculpting class. This is a good place to start because it's essentially the, the core foundation, the primary forms, or even like the, not even like a level below prim primary forms uh, for sculpting heads. From here, what we can do, uh, much like this, we don't need to make this part anymore. It's kind of already given that for us, right? So we can kind of see if I can even get it in the same spot. Oh. Fancy little features. You can kind of see that it's already given us this part of our character, right? Which is great. That doesn't mean it has any real character to it. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and move it around and make it something that's interesting. So if you want to just start sculpting, what I recommend doing is just beginning to continue to block in what some of those those forms will be. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the chin here. I'm going to pull this out. Right. I'm going to probably make the let's make this characters head a little wider, maybe. Or like a heroic jaw. For some reason, Josh Brolin came to mind. So maybe like a furrowed, straight-browed person with a big chin. Right, so we can take all these features, this base feature, and begin to, to pull them around. Um, Jack from YouTube is saying, and I agree, that base meshes told to tend to hold a hint of the original so you can see where they're starting from what i like about this one is there's enough here that you should be able to break away from it pretty easily right so if i want to make this a it's this is more like using a mannequin to me in a lot of ways of saying this is the way this is my starting point it's not going to look anything like this when it's done but it's a starting point for the actual character to to turn into something different so we'll start here, and now I'm going to add some of these little things to get some of them, maybe a little more of this chin. I'm going to start carving this in. I'm going to start carving in, maybe defining what this eye shape is, right? So 
what's the outside of this brow going to look like? I don't actually know. Let's find a find an image. All right. Got some ads I'm trying to skip through. So I'm looking at Mr. Brolin over here. So I'm not necessarily going to use specifically as the only reference, but it's just a, a general, you know, starting point for some shapes. Got a very straight nose. Uh, after sculpting, got a question from YouTube, Fake Plastic Tree, which I hope is a reference to the Fake Plastic Trees song by Radiohead, my favorite album. Um, do you need to add polygons on top of it to animate? I think what you're talking about is retopology. Uh, generally, the answer to that is yes. Uh, a sculpt that you start in ZBrush is usually not going to have quite the... Uh, that we're usually going to be production ready for animating. But yes, you probably will need to retopologize it. Uh, at that point, you could also add textures on it or do other things like that. Um, that's usually what happens. I'm going to try to get this line something like this. Maybe I'll add in. I like sculpting the little eye kind of in here. And then layering on top of it, that clay buildup brush. Trying to be clear about where my forms are. I don't want them to be too messy. So somewhat clear as far as what uh, what shapes are making what shapes. There's not a lot of uh, room in the subdivisions here to really go crazy with adding detail or too much character. But you can see, you can pretty quickly start adding the features of a face. Great. And then you just kind of start going and, and continuing. And this is why a base mesh is a good starting point. So again, we started from this and we're building it out into something that's got more um, detail on it. Uh, let's see, make sure I didn't miss any. How do you sculpt the body? We'll hop into that in just a second. And then, it, so how do we retop with the very minute details, like a mole or something? No. Uh, often you retopologize the overall shape following the flow of the geometry. And then the details that you're talking about, like the moles or smaller, smaller things, typically will uh, be projected onto a texture map of some kind uh, if they have depth to them they'll have a bump map of some kind or a displacement map 
uh, whether it's a bump map, a normal map, or displacement, sometimes a combination of, the, of two or three of those. And um, then you will have uh, that mesh will be animated. Uh, if you're interested in that, I would recommend checking out probably uh, some tutorials. The Nomen Workshop has great tutorials, so if you're interested in that, uh, about retopology or making characters for production or doing something like that is always a good place to start uh, with that. Ricardo from YouTube, hello, hope you're doing well. So now we can make this little last section. I'm not going to go too much further on this character because we were just kind of having fun showing the difference, but you can kind of see how uh, you know, a character starting from a base mesh as as compared to uh, what we started here, which is Zebra's Core Mini, the free version of the program. Uh, the full program can get a little, can do things a little faster, uh, go to more uh, final levels of detail on things. Right? It's just, uh, it's different. It's it's same. It's the same, meaning there's a lot of the same things that that it does. Uh, but it's also quite different in the way that it uh the amount of things that it can do but i guess that's the program and not so i'm just kind of adding in some planes here sketching in to see where the lips are going to go where the barrel of the mouth is how far down the chin goes uh, and just kind of starting to add this stuff in Uh, I don't think ZBrush Core Mini has a really a masking feature, uh, whereas ZBrush itself and I think ZBrush Core do. So I can mask off an area, which means like it's just like masking Photoshop or anything else. I can't affect this. I can add hit the mask. A little bit more level of detail to this. Sculpting uh, good in Blender is a question, and sorry for spamming questions. Uh, no, no worries at all. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I've never really sculpted in Blender. I can tell you that the the pro sculpting app of choice is without question ZBrush. There's not even really a question mark for me. Most, and I think most people would agree, Mudbox is out there. You know, a lot of production artists use Mudbox. Um, well, some, but the uh, brush is by far the most the most used sculpting app. So there we go make a quick face and the as you can see like the, the difference is not just how fast you can do something it's just some of the extra features you're getting some of the extra tools you're gonna be starting from right like starting here we we have to say like do you want to erase this sure would you like to save no get a stone so this one is going to give you some certain ways to carve into this which are going to have a pattern to it so if you want to have certain elements it's just different things uh, this is going to give you a full suite of features but that doesn't mean you shouldn't play around with uh, the free version of uh, of ZBrush if it's something that you're interested in. You know, I think that 
the ZBrush Core Mini is an awesome thing for people to to explore and to try and to do new things and to to get into digital sculpting if it's something that they're interested in. Uh, got the question. Uh, Caesar David from YouTube is asking, "What is the most common in production start from a base?" or deform already existing characters? Uh, that's a really good question. Often what you'll see in production is you're going to see a character have... Um, if you're working on something like a game or you're working on something like uh, even animated films, I know they do this, they will have the same base mesh for their geometry, especially for faces. Uh, body sometimes not as much in game in games you know the bodies are going to be wildly different or they're going to be customizable or things like that but especially if you see any characters in games that are going to have morphs meaning you can change their body size their shape uh during character customization they're sculpting multiple different versions of those characters and then they're blending between them but they have to have the same base mesh uh, most animated films will do this as well so, for example, I believe in like all of Big Hero Six and Tangled. Those every character in the film uh, has the same base topology, and that's so that the rigging and the animation can be done not just easier, but it can be done in a way that, that everybody's comfortable with and is familiar with, and you're not having to learn new characters. Uh, obviously, the horse is not before anybody says that, but uh, you know certain characters or every humanoid character does have the same topology, from what I recall. Um, very good question, though. Uh, if it's a game or it's a project where everything's going to be wildly different, then it doesn't matter as much, right? Uh, but it is very common for people to start from existing base meshes, just in general. Uh, it's great to sculpt from scratch if you have the time, right? I think everybody loves sculpting from scratch and making a character from scratch if they can. But what you notice probably is that, you know, if is it faster for me to, to sculpt a head from scratch or is it faster for me to sculpt a head from an existing head? So often you'll, you'll have... Um, Starting points, you'll see uh, libraries, like a kit bash library, or you'll have base mesh libraries. And so if I need a glove, if I need a hand, if I need a shirt, if I need a whatever, I may have a whole library of previous things that I have made. And if you're at a company, you'll probably have a whole library of things that other people have made as well to start from. All right, so you're gonna have uh, gloves, jackets, heads, and you kind of, create this Frankenstein from the very beginning of, of all those pieces that you're going to put together and then eventually um, you can kind of combine them into one thing and adjust them to, to be the actual character so it does it really does depend on what you're what it is uh, but in production saving time is is key We just kind of been sculpting this guy. This is, this is sort of a. Right now, it's a poorly made Josh Brolin clone, I think. Or it's Josh Brolin combined with Deadpool, uh, maybe. Uh, let's see. What would I advise a beginner for character sculpting? Uh, if somebody was saying I really wanted to be a character character artist, I really want to get into character sculpting. Uh, there's a couple things you you should probably learn or be aware of, and number one is just uh, anatomy. Anatomy characters are characters, right? They're all going to have similar bones and muscle groups and things like that that are going to be be universal between most of them. And so that's the number one thing I would probably start recommending to somebody who's interested is is get familiar with with your anatomy uh, I don't believe you need to know all the names of everything uh, I used to know all the names and then over time I kind of just developed shorthands with them uh, and I don't know them all off the top of my head but it is important uh, it is important to know where they go what they connect to you know what the bony landmarks are and all that kind of stuff um, that is important right to know anatomy uh, the next step that I would, and you can learn anatomy by 
drawing, you can learn anatomy by sculpting, whatever is the, the medium that you feel the most comfortable in. Uh, I think sculpting for me is the one that always stuck out. It was just, it is just a little easier. Um, so that's the one that I, re I would recommend. Uh, aside from that, I would start getting into just making characters. I think, you know, learning how to do uh, modeling in Maya in a 3D package is great. Uh, you should definitely learn that. But if you're interested and you just want to make sure that you know, you know, do I like this? Is this something I want to keep working in? Um, start sculpting in ZBrush. Sculpt skulls, you know, brush up on your anatomy. Sculpt sc skulls do studies of anatomy, sculpt just an arm, sculpt just a torso, sculpt just a leg. Uh, that's a really good way to get into sculpting, to practice your sculpting, but also to work on your anatomy at the same time. You know, like we were kind of just doing in this program, sculpting a skull. It's a great starting way uh, to, to get comfortable with it. Uh, then from there, start sculpting heads. Start sculpting heads, sculpt a head a day, minimum right when you want to get into doing characters uh build a sculpt ahead a day from a sphere start from a sphere don't start from a base mesh uh, that's probably the number one thing that i would work on uh is that and then sculpt the whole body right okay so we'll sculpt the whole body and we'll go from there um that's a, a good way to build up your anatomy to build up your knowledge and anatomy and your understanding of form and then uh, on top of that, I would probably start trying to, when you're doing those heads, when you're doing those bodies, use reference. Always use reference, especially when you're starting. And eventually you want to be trying to make the reference. So this is the reference. It's not just I'm using it as reference and I'm you know, wanting to um, make something like this. It should be I'm trying to make this. Uh, when you're starting because that's the way that you get better to actually try to make an object a thing right so i think that's a good way for us for you to to kind of get into something because uh, it gives you a nice ramp up right so start start sculpting in zbrush start sculpting skulls from spheres then sculpt uh you know find a way to make a tube it's pretty straightforward i'll show you in a second but like we probably just go like this take a sphere um, or a, whatever a, a spool sphere turn on dynamesh mask half of it there you go you got a long thing right and we're going to go geometry dynamesh oh. be a little lower but overall it's probably fine sculpt an arm out of that so you sculpt a skull out of a sphere, sculpt an arm out of this, sculpt a leg out of this, sculpt a torso out of this. Individual anatomy studies uh, are really good ways to, to start on that. Then start sculpting heads from spheres. And you'll, you'll find yourself really challenged in your anatomy knowledge. You'll find yourself really challenged in your, your knowledge of, of how the body works, what the body looks like. And then when you can feel comfortable doing that and you can sculpt a whole character, you know, start trying to dynamesh the whole character, uh, then, or if you're really struggling, you can start getting into using base meshes. There's a lot of base meshes already in ZBrush. So you can use any of these, whether it's the Demo Soldier or the Super Average Man or Nick Z's or Julie or any of these here, you can use those. You can also use the mannequins, which I think are probably the best thing that I would recommend is using these uh, mannequins, which are in here. And you can sculpt for those. That's a really great way to start as well, to understand your anatomy. Um, so yeah, that's the way that I would start. And just start making stuff that you like. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, anatomy is the, the hardest thing to get into, especially if it's not really your favorite subject, uh, but it is important. Good question. Good question, long answer. Uh, what's your take on ownership if you have so many aspects of a character kit bash from other meshes? Uh, Mike from Twitch is asking. A uh, good question. Uh, often I would say you kind of, if you're working in a production, it is difficult to have full ownership over a whole character, right? Especially if you're working in film. 
if you're working in games, it can be a little more, right? As far as typically a games character artist will do everything from the high poly sculpting to the low poly sculpting, uh, modeling to the textures, to the surfacing, to the hair, to everything. And what it looks like in engine is what it looks like. Uh, that doesn't really happen in film. So uh, you kind of have to accept that it is, it is a collaborative process if you're working on, on something like that. So my take on ownership is uh, you're working on a big project together and that's kind of what you are all owning together. Uh, as an art director, it was something, and creative directors, it was definitely something that I tried to give artists as much as possible, meaning uh, say, hey, I'm going to try to give you ownership as much as possible and let you uh, take over with this you know, uh, character. Like, you can, I want you to, to try to do the whole thing. But uh, often what I notice with, unless it's like a certain, like, uh, base mesh library that's got everything already I think that you tend to to tweak them still considerably uh, to where it's not necessarily just you know a, co a collaboration of parts so usually it's like a glove I need the beginnings of a glove so I can chop the fingers off and put a hole in the back and it's a fingerless glove from Breakfast Club right like that's that's the way that I kind of tend to see it happening is more along that lines rather than just like, you know, character customization. So I think there's a, a kind of an in-between space there, uh, which can be sometimes tough to navigate, but it's also at the end of the day, you are all usually working on one project. So that's also part of the fun is working on one project else uh, what is the material that I'm working on I'm working on a uh, material a mat cap called Z6 uh, I think they were by an artist Z bro materials mat cap Let's see if I found the right person nope nope This is an artist who has done a lot of cool sculpts and stuff, and it looks like there's, you know, they've had some down downloads for mat caps. So I just searched Zebro mat cap, and a couple of them come up. Uh, so you might have to do some work to find them, but that's the mat cap library, which is here, is one of the ways that I've found many of these, and just kind of over time, uh, you know, navigating through, finding the ones that I really want and you know checking them out so i think it's probably matt and these are all cool like you could find some cool ones in here uh, but i don't remember specifically if the one I, if i found the one from here but there's good ones in there to play around with plenty to play around with Some of these are like eyes specifically or fish skin. Um, let's see. How often do these streams occur? These streams have been occurring for the past nine months every Wednesday morning from 10 a.m. Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time for three hours every Wednesday morning. Um, I guess we could just make this character a little more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to import. How do I want to do this? I'm going to save this. I was going to use the base mesh that we already used, but we already did that, right? Um, so we're going to 
We're going to do a mannequin uh, because I think they're cool. What I'm going to do is, oh, this little synth is going crazy on us right now, isn't it? Uh, all right, so we're going to go in here. We're going to get this mat cap up. We're just going to get this here. I'm going to change the background to go a slightly different color. And then, of course, what you can do is there's so many things over here. I'm just going to load what I just did, which I called Brolin Head, which is not accurate because it doesn't totally look like Josh Brolin, but that's what I started off with my reference. And I'm going to append it into this scene. There it is. I am a huge, huge fan of the mannequins, and I think that there's something that has slowly kind of gone away for time. But I think they're great. I love them. They're so good for just ideating and exploring, exploring things. I use them all the time. There's not really a great way to like place this in here. It's still maybe a tad big. Uh, is, is it going to last after COVID? It definitely started because of COVID, but it's a, it's a thing we've kind of been enjoying and we're trying to figure out now what our plan is for the future with it. So I I would stay tuned to let it you know, let you know. But I, I, for now, they're, they're fun and we'll... We had been talked about doing a stream before COVID anyway, so uh, and they, I feel somewhat confident that we will continue to do them or something like them post-COVID. All right, so we can get a, a nice base mesh here now um, using this mannequin and we're just going to do a really simple pose probably a, it's a symmetrical pose uh, but we can bring that in what's what will be new in season two? Oh, i love that it rhymed uh what will be new in season two uh what i want to have more in season two is going to be um more guests we did a bunch of guests at the beginning of season one last year in april and may and even in June, um, but we didn't really continue with it. And so what I want to do is be hopefully bringing in some more guests that would, we would, the guest and I would probably be making stuff together or talking about something that they're working on and uh, talk through a little bit of process and talk through, you know, pseudo interview podcast, but also just kind of work on something together. Think of it almost like a cooking show is kind of how I imagine it. That's that's what I'm envision, envisioning for season two. So I'm hoping we can get some more guests in. So if there's people where you're like, hey, Josh, I'd love for you to so-and-so's work has been really cool and I'd love to see how they're doing it. Let us know. And uh, that's very helpful. So yeah, let us know. I don't know what this pose is that I'm doing, but maybe like some like thing. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, did I catch any good movies, shows during the holiday break? I did. Um, I. My wife and I have been binging Star Trek Discovery because we've got CBS All Access, which I'm a pretty big fan of, actually. We did the same thing with Picard. I'm just playing around with this right now. I'm not really doing anything, am I? Uh, Picard, a movie that I've been watching quite a bit. It's not specifically, you know... We're going to use the other one just because... Why not? You could do the mannequin. They're fun, but I'm realizing that what I actually want to get out of this will be faster with a, with a faster and more fun to do with uh, the same base mesh I've been using before. We have a ton of other bases. This is one that I use, so this is one that's like got nice topology, but has a good head and good hands, so I could add add uh, things to it. It's much easier. 
Um, this is a pretty good one. This is the Nick Z one that I've edited, so there's no uh, genitals or toes, so it's a little simpler to use. Um, there's a bunch of scans you can get, so this is a scan guy I use sometimes. It really depends on what you want to start and what your goal is. I'm going to use uh, our basic guy. Just overwrote what I've had. Undo. And sometimes you, I like to append a star in here, and then I'll import the thing over the thing. Let's do the um, this one. Seems like it's quite large. Deformation, there it is. Size. And effects are key, in case you were wondering. Yeah, nice. That fits pretty good. But this is where you see, like, oh, that's so much faster. Right? Like, that's so much faster to just plop a head on, on a body and, and start sculpting it. Could I go in and do the thing where I stretch out the the sphere and make shoulders and dynamesh it out? Yes. Would it come into maybe a more creative from scratch look? Very possibly. But uh, it's also going to take so much longer to do that. So something else I can do is because this mesh specifically has okay topology, I could not going to but I could uh, wrap it to this and project it onto this mesh well maybe let's try that should we try that let's try that I'm sure some of you have never seen this where you can project a mesh to a mesh so let's go ahead and do it uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this mesh eventually get the details of this one so this will have this shape cool all right, so let's start there. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this. We'll have them both on, and I'm just going to start pushing this over the top of this. I see it. Oh, I was going to say a movie I'd been watching. I've been watching quite a bit of this movie, and I don't know why. But I really, really been liking it. Is Eurovision? Has anybody out there seen Eurovision? I hope so. Big fan. Big fan of Eurovision right now. This will also be a good example to show, uh, you know, how... About the Icelandic guys, yes. With Will Ferrell. I like that movie a lot. That was a movie we've watched a couple times over the holiday break. What I'm doing is I'm basically trying to line up this geometry so that it's going to be a little bit more uh, encompassing, enveloping of, uh, of the actual sculpt. All right, let's get this up here. You can see this mesh that I'm working on right now is not really like pretty it's not really supposed to be pretty it's more of just does it actually you know is it going to work is it going to go around what i need it to um let's go down a little bit i'm gonna mask this i'm gonna pull this down it looks absolutely terrifying That'll hopefully get the eyes in more of a, around the eyes of the other mesh. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, ooh, this character, um, I'm gonna make a morph target. 
That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we'll make one here. We'll, we're going to do this a couple times. Morph target, store morph target. In case you've never used the morph target, basically what this is, is you can move it as much as you want, and then you switch it, and it has a save state. Or a think of it like camera A, camera B. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to geometry project, uh, subtool, excuse me, project. And if I hit project all right now, it will project that geometry to that geometry, which is great. But what you're going to see is that some of it is not really doing what I want it to do. And this is where I basically need to come in here and uh, spend some time adjusting where these things are going to go and probably also masking off several bits of this so that only parts of it are going to be projected, not the entire thing. Another thing you're going to see is this mesh has a mouth bag or a mouth sock inside, whereas this one is just a sculpted plane. So we're going to have to get to a point where we're kind of just getting the tops or just the bottoms of this. So that's why I'm going to have this, this uh, morph target up quite a bit. So project all is great because it lets me do this. I can also go in here and hit BMO for my morph brush. What this lets me do is it goes back to the previous morph back to the previous camera basically we're going to play around with this quite a bit to get this uh matched up because i think you can see the overall shape gets there which is good but it's not exactly what we want and some of this is looking a little jacked up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here i'm going to mask this This is kind of some more of the tedious work that I think a lot of people don't recognize when it comes to, to character art or modeling stuff is, you know, transferring one mesh to another. There's a bunch of cool tools that do this now, and there's other ways to do this too, but uh, this is kind of the, the more straight up way. I'm going to go ahead. There's also a good time. Like what I could do is uh, poly groups. I'm going to make a group masked button, which I already did. You can see there's a control M right there. So if I hit group masked, that little set of islands now is just green, which is great. I'm going to do the same thing here with like just some of the parts of the head. So I'm going to hide visibility is going to be here. Hide PT. Right. I just want this little section here. It'll be fine. So I just want this. You can grow if you want to get a little larger. If you want to get some more polygons in there. I'm going to hide that. You kind of want this one though. So I'm trying to get this whole ring. I don't want this ring. So I'm coming in here and saying like which one is needed and not needed. like I think I've got all what I need but I think there's a one right here no that's okay I don't want this though and I'm gonna group that so I can have these little sections here uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it a little easier That when I want to start projecting stuff or start masking things, that I have it really easily. Do this to the ears. I could do this to all these individual little parts. Ears, I'm not going to be super concerned with. It will probably mess them up. Whenever you have geometry that begins to overlap, uh, it gets challenging. Uh, am I going to be using Substance Painter? Not today. No, not today for this. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to mask it, I'm going to take this, I'm going to mask it, and we're going to go in here, we're going to see if we can get a decent projection. First shot. There is a distance, so you don't have to do the entire distance, but I'm going to. You can see that I think it's doing a little better. Some weirdness in the top lip. 
before I continue, it's likely because these polygons here are shooting into the back of the head or to the front of the head. So let's get, maybe we'll just say like, these. I'm gonna start hiding the front of the face, which isn't really what I want. I'm gonna come over here, hide this. That should have what I want. So now I can take basically this whole thing, mask it, invert the mask. Still a little weirdness in that mouth and maybe some of these polys need to go backwards, but we'll, we're gonna work our way through this now. All right, so let's take, those are really shooting into the eyeballs. Fine, we'll smooth some of this out so that it feels a little more clear. This is also where we can hide some of these easily and say like, what is actually going on here? Let's fix this. So we got some work to do, but you can see the difference between before and after. Uh, we're gonna keep going up in uh, subdivision levels. There's just not enough information there to really capture it. And the slip section is gonna be a work in progress. We're gonna have to sculpt it anyways. So we got a good starting point at least. So what that means is I can now subdivide unless there's anything that's really shooting off into the oblivion, which I don't think I see. That's Areas to fix for sure, but terrible. Nothing impossible. It should be fixed though. This is a lot of what a uh, you know um, the unsexy part of character art is. Like, all right, great job. You've made a great sculpt. Everybody's happy with it. It's approved. Now you need to do that on the production mesh. Get it onto the right topology. You haven't already. All right. We're going to sculpt those lips later anyway, so we're going to start with that, and that's going to be fine. Uh, we're going to go in here, and we're going to add a subdivision level, so I'm just going to hit Control-D. I'm going to save my project, which is because, uh, you know, I know it's a new year, and everybody's having a great time with that, but uh, I'm still incredibly paranoid. We need to save. We're going to hit Control-D, and that's going to be a subdivision. Uh, you can notice that this basement mesh already had a couple other subdivision levels in it. Um, so, yeah. Is it weird? I've got a question from Twitch. Is it weird that I like to UV into Retopo? Uh, I don't know, Chad. Is it weird? I think it's not weird. I think it's fine, personally. Maybe UV... I actually quite like retopoing. Whenever I show that process, I see a lot of people being like, why are you doing this? There's got to be a faster way to do this. And there's probably a faster way to do it, but I know that if I do it the way that I've done it, it will be done the right way and will be faster. All right, did I add that subdivision level? I did. All right, so now we're going to go up one level at a time. I'm going to hide the whole body, show the character again, All right? And we're going to go back to our morph target. You'll notice the morph target doesn't allow us to do it anymore. It's because there's only a morph target on the first, on one subdivision, one subdivision. So I need to go delete and now show the whole thing. Uh, Wrap 3D is another program that was just talked about in chat. Uh, is a basically a program that does what we're doing right now. There are programs and other ways to do this, but this is the this is the way to do it if you've never done it before and don't really know how it works. We're gonna go in here. 
we're going to mask this off and we're going to do project all basically what you'll see if i hide it is now we're just getting that extra level of detail which is really what we wanted jack from youtube is asking what was the first program i learned to sculpt with that for me would have been zbrush that was probably zbrush 2 2.5 i think actually specifically is what it was and i didn't really get a great set of topology around these eyeballs that's something we would probably want to fix at some point it's probably going to be something we're going to struggle with over the next hour as we work on this stream is getting these eyes and getting some eyes in there because going from a sculpt that's basically a block of clay to a more production ready sculpt can take a little time and there's uh, part of the things you need to fix is this stuff which is like making mesh that should be multiple meshes you know like just got to make it work that's part of the challenge we're gonna add another subdivision level Sixty thousand now. We're gonna go back to our morph target just to have it. Delete store. Voila. Let's just do this. And we didn't have a ton of detail in this, but this will give us our last projection that we probably need to do. This is why I go one level at a time is because you do get these little artifacts that kind of disappear and shoot off into the ether. And so you want to catch them. You go straight to your highest level of subdivision. What will happen is that these will be shot into like oblivion and you may never be able to recover them. So uh, that's why we do it this way. All right, that's going to be close enough except for these terrifying eyeballs. So we'll uh, just out smooth it out oh this is going to be a good enough starting point did we get everything we wanted from this not really but it's enough of the base forms that i think we can sculpt from it we still have it here for reference which is a key point uh something i can do at this point though because i, I should be able to uh, this is a mesh that now has subdivision levels on it and should be a mirrored mesh. Uh, is I can go in here and do smart resim. So I'm going to turn off symmetry, mask half of the object, go to deformation, and right at the top here, hit smart resim. And you'll see basically what it did is it's there's been some subtle variances in between them, and so it's matching them. So this side is now exactly the same as this side be cool cool so we have done the possible it's not impossible but the tedious part of getting a body getting a head sculpt onto a body and getting it onto nicer topology so now, now what we can do is if we eventually wanted to animate this this is a more animatable animatable mesh than what we have there's still work that i would need to do to do that but uh it's on a much better space and we can start sculpting again which is what we wanted to do to begin with so i'm going to just inflate some of this and we're going to start getting this to be a little better all right on top of that we're also going to start adjusting some of the sculpt itself so that it feels like it's all one character rather than just a head mashed onto the body so now we can actually come in here and start sculpting mask we have this so we can always mask that very easily uh something that's different when you're sculpting on like a clay quote unquote block and something that is uh has nice topology is you can really play with the overlaps in the forms specifically think about things like eyelids and lips those are some of the two big ones that you can really think about here because uh in this quote unquote block of clay here i'm gonna delete this and we'll just go to here haha <laughs> in this block of clay we could carve it so that it looks like the lips are going underneath it this is relatively low in its topology and same with the eyelids but 
uh, in the actual model, if meaning if calling this the actual model, right? Now we could come in and take these lips and really sculpt them to a pretty intense level. So I'm actually going to take this and this, and this is all going to kind of be the same section. So I can actually sculpt and should sculpt if this was going to be a production uh, model. Uh, the insides of these not i don't need to go crazy but you know you're never likely going to see the inside of the lip all the way back here uh, but it is a good habit to make it look like it should uh, from multiple angles add some thickness to it and kind of treat it as if it is you know just the one thing uh, so now i can take that i'll kind of go back and forth have and see what I was doing here. So I'll take this and I'll just maybe even mask the top and pull it down. Now one thing that you might see in this it can be challenging is uh, you're now working with meshes with a specific thickness uh, which can be hard to deal with. I'm going to group these pieces together real quick. Nice beard there for a minute, though. Mm, how do I want to do this? This, maybe? Oh. So I'm going to wrap the outside of the, that lip. Hide the purple. I just want to encompass a little bit more on this poly group. I'm going to group this. What is the hardest part of the process of making a character production ready? I would think it would be retopology or rigging, but maybe that's just because you've never done either, and it's a little intimidating. Uh, getting a character production ready, the hardest part? Um... a really good question um hardest part of making a character production ready rigging you know from a character artist standpoint is not actually something that you deal with all that much like as an individual because it's somebody else's job right So it actually is, you know, working with back and forth on a rigging team or an animation team on making sure that something is working is difficult. You know, it's not like hard. It's just a lot of back and forth. Make sure that it's working for everybody. I think is really the key element there. Um, I guess the, probably the hardest part is coming up with the characters difficult, sure, but probably just like getting the final characters approved, going through the approval process of like getting, going through the whole thing. It, it, I don't know. There's not like one hard spot that I can really think of. It's like this, this part sucks. This is the hardest part. Uh, I, I honestly can't think of, of an element that that would be. Yeah, maybe annoying. Retopology, for most artists, like when you're thinking about the artist side of it, you're going to say sculpting is super fun, retopology is, a, is boring and annoying, UVing is boring and annoying. Like those are the things I think the average person will say, like, I don't like these. Uh, but I don't think that they're necessarily, like, hard. Sometimes they're a little more tedious. Or annoying. All right. Now, I could have just sculpted this head to be that other shape probably faster in the time that we've done this, but uh, it is what it is. And that's why you see people start with the base mesh, like rather than saying, oh, you know, I'm just going to sculpt it from a sphere, right? Um, 
and go from there. I could have taken the base mesh that I had, right, which was this. And sculpted this face to be whatever shape I wanted faster than it was for me to reproject this face, which now I'm looking at it like it doesn't even quite have the charm of what this did. So now I have to spend a bunch of time trying to get the charm of this back in back in there. Right? So it is a just to be aware of how the, these processes can work. Now, if this was a fully sc final sculpted head with textures and stuff, different different thing. start sculpting now we can bring all these elements in real thin on the corner of those lips Uh, this mesh actually here used to be my number one mesh I would use all the time. I think I got this head from a 3D total tutorial probably like a decade ago. I just used it over and over and over. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, modeling and sculpting is still just polygons, voxels, but polygons that you're uh, moving around. What do I do for okay, sculptors? I, I move quads. Exactly. So, as you can see, the eyeballs that I put in there uh, don't really fit. And that's because whatever I had sculpted. Is not a real sphere even though it was kind of appearing to look okay uh, it wasn't a real sphere and so when I started adding other elements of the sculpt around it uh, it doesn't really work anymore so I need to, to actually change parts of where this geo is going to go and again this is why it's like oh you probably should have just sculpted this from the scratch from the very beginning I don't really have a specific head I'm working on, so I could also just do this. It's really intense, though. Just to kind of show you, for example, how we could do both. I'm 
100% sure what I'm making, but... Even though this isn't a drastic change from where it was, you can see that it's it's not hard to go in and change a base mesh to look like another character over time. This head is being a significant amount of work. And why I like staying in this phase for so long is it's more sketchy. When you start getting into like what it's actually gonna look like as a production model, you're like, okay. bag right now. Did all that work and I'm like I realized that like the, the model that I got to this point wasn't really far enough along to really explain like not to explain I explained it but to like to benefit from it. Whereas I can come in here and I'll have you know I, I have all this uh like what I would what I want to do I'll just like Kind of give you guys an explanation because maybe it's helpful to see like what i'm struggling with is like the the forms that i have here are really rough right and i'm also fighting making sure the topology is is coming across so i want to come in and just like obliterate essentially everything i have start with a cleaner base because i'm gonna have to sculpt it all anyways scratch And if I'm going to do that, you not just start scratch. Where I can have like a nice loop around the eyes and all that stuff. That's what I'm struggling with right now, which is, uh, I think, you know, I'm not really afraid of seeing, letting people see that like it's not always easy. What you start out making doesn't always end up with what you think intended to make. And that's part of just the process of being an artist. Eyes are always bad. You have tried many times, but with no luck. Uh, if they're bad, it's probably what a lot of I was dealing with here. So if we zoom back, and this is a perfect example, but you'll see that when I imported the eyes, they didn't actually fit. The spheres didn't really fit this shape because I hadn't sculpted around a sphere. And so I needed to do a lot of work there. The second thing is the overlap. So it's actually easier to see in this phase. But this part of the eyelid should always be above this part. Because their eyelids in the top one falls on top of the bottom one, right? So you need to make sure that it's it's overlapping it. That's a really important uh, element of that. Like right here, this is actually wrong when I look at this. See how this lid is is below and in front of, it should not be that way. Or what makes this character look a little odd. 
And this base mesh look a little odd. So I kind of need to like spend some time pulling that back. And there's eyes in here. I need to be aware of even just the quick pulling that backwards in space and fitting it to the eyelid or to the eyeball is going to help a significant amount. Now that you've got like a base or I've got a base and you know there's plenty of these in the tools you could use this with the Nick Z one. This is a fine one to use as well. You can come in and actually start manipulating the shapes that already exist. It's like, okay. Be, if you're using a base mesh like this, I find that it's much more about intentional movements. Meaning, like, I don't I don't want to adjust this eyelid now because I, I feel okay with where it is. I'll adjust it later. But right now, I want to say, like, okay, well, I want this shape here to change. I want that to change, and that should wrap around the eyeball a little bit. I can hide the masks to make that a little easier. Then I want to make, you know, this movement right here. I want to make sure that on this line maybe that this is where the, the eyebrow is actually sitting. As when you're sculpting in Dynamesh or something, uh, I find that that can be a little bit different. You know, even just look at what we're doing with the eyes here you know, from what it was to what it is or is turning into right it's just a very different type of working sometimes when you have a, a mesh that already has a lot of information there but this is where um, I think somebody had said earlier in the stream it can be difficult to break away from a base mesh. You sometimes see a little bit of of the character or the whatever it is in that base mesh for a long time. That's because you are having to, to change it rather than make it from nothing. So you know, there was already a nose shape here, but I have to redefine it and re Resculpt it to a way that fits the character that I'm doing versus what was already there. So the lips, there already was lip shapes, you know, you can go on and do the whole character if you're sculpting this way. There's not a wrong way to do it. I think people, it, you know, can sometimes be a little sensitive with saying like, oh, well, you didn't sculpt that from scratch. Okay. Like, is that really the important thing every time to sculpt something from scratch every time? No, not every time. I think it's important to know how to do both. And I think it's important to, you know, if an employer is asking you like, what was your process? I started with the base mesh. no harm in saying I started from a base mesh. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not about cheating. It's about getting stuff done or not getting it done exactly. It's not about oh well, you didn't sculpt it your character from a sphere you're not getting a job then it would probably be the opposite why did you sculpt it from a sphere why why did you do that there's other ways to do that if 
fits wool. I wanted to sculpt it from a sphere because I wanted to practice my forms and I wanted to, if you have an explanation for it, that makes sense. But it's like, okay, well, why'd you start from a base mesh? Well, it was an easier starting point and there was a timeline. That's exactly what they want to hear. That's exactly what an employer would want to hear of, oh, so you were on a timeline. What was your timeline about? Yeah, it always, at studios, you will always, 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 almost always start from a base mesh. So don't feel bad if you want to start from a base mesh. And there's some here, right? If you want to start from a sphere, start here. There's plenty of stuff to do here. Start from a planes of the head, start here. Start from a mannequin, start here. Use uh, Nick Z's is probably my favorite of these. Right? Use that, edit it. Start from super average man. Any of those are fine to start from. Starting from spheres is fun because you get to do studies. Exactly. It's a test. That's the way that I see it. It's a test or it's, you know, it's more, it's more artistic, right? It's I'm, I'm exploring this space. I'm exploring this thing. I want to do this. I want to try to see if I can do it. Can I do it? That's different to me. But if you're just sculpting it, everything out of a sphere to begin with, you're going to try to make a fully retopized to apologize character if that's your end goal you might be going about it the wrong way But I mean, to be clear, and I'm not trying to say not, I'm not saying like doing it from a sphere is bad. That was my advice for people who wanted to get into ZBrush. You want to get into digital sculpting, starting from a sphere is, is the most fun way to do it. And starting to sculpt things from a sphere, how to make those shapes. So there is a line of, can I make, could I make the shape to begin with? Or no, you can't. Maybe try some, try some studies or do it a different way. And sculpting a skull from a sphere is a great foundational test. So I guess like even from here to, right, this is where it started. You can see we're still working our way away from some of these initial shapes, but it's getting out. It's getting away from it. Don't feel bad if you want to do it in any, any whatever way works for you. All right, that's that's the important thing. Sculpted an incredibly generic man. Is a separate problem. But I would say it probably looks better than this one. And I see where it's like, I, I didn't need to go through this clay sculpting phase and I can get something closer and probably better. Granted, it's a different character, still a character, but I have to. Probably just going to noodle on this for a while, so I might just hang on to that as a little side thing. So we're going to save it. We got about 40 minutes 
left in our stream today. Trying to figure out if we want to continue with this. Should we get some anatomy in there? Or should we start something new? Anatomy or something new? Chat, you guys have any suggestions? Anything you'd like to see more of? Anatomy? Get one vote for anatomy. One person voting twice for anatomy. Well, the basic way we're going to start with that is uh, new. We got one vote for new and two of the same. All right. Two votes for anatomy, one for new. I change the music too. All right. Looks like anatomy is going to be the winner here. Um, let's get into a different, I would love to play non royalty free music, but because we store these and you can watch them on our YouTube and Twitch pages, um, I have to play royalty free music. Let's get into some synth wave. The activities depicted in this video are highly physical in nature. They should not be attempted without first consulting your doctor. Since they can also become violent, you might also seek advice from a psychiatrist, clergyman, or criminal attorney. Oh wow, this is, that is not what I thought. All right, you got a lot of anatomy votes, so that's great. Um, anatomy, what was I gonna do? That's right, I was gonna bring this over. Welcome to our anatomy friend. This is a uh, Freedom of Teach Anatomy Tools. I don't remember what the most recent name of the company is, but this is what I have up on my desk at all times. So we're gonna have this guy right over here. It's shockingly heavy. Um, first things to start looking at when you're doing, yeah, we can call him Steve. Steve, when we look over at Steve, what we're going to be doing is looking for Steve's bony landmarks. And the first things that you typically are going to look for, especially if you've already started on a head, is going to be something like the collarbones, right? The, uh, the edges of, I think it's called the, something process, a chromium process. I don't know if that's the right term. But this process right here, basically, you can feel the top of your collarbone if you feel it go all the way up right here and you feel this little bony piece before it turns into like the meat of your shoulder. If you go like this and you lift your shoulder over your head, you'll feel that that doesn't move at all, right? Or very little, the collarbone's moving. But that actual bone doesn't move. This is a very important thing that we'll also be looking for. So basically the collarbone to the front, all the way uh, along the back of your shoulder blades, uh, the ribs at the bottom, and then we start looking for our bones and our, our elbows and our wrists is where we're going to start. So the first thing that we can do is do it really, really simply. I think I turned that music up a little loud, so apologies on that. I just wanted to hear that disclaimer. Um, this base mesh has done a pretty solid job uh, of that for us, but we can also look at the scan of this guy here. So we're also got our other model, not our anatomy man, but we'll call him Bob. All right, Bob. So as you can see, I'm going to mask here. This is that what I was talking about. You can follow. You can actually see this is a scan of a real person. It is mirrored, so that's why it looks so perfect. Um, but you can see this right here is the collarbone. You can see it follow up and along. This kind of negative space here is where those bones are uh, kind of going underneath some of the surface as the deltoids attach like this. And they attach here. This is going to be that big process. This is basically a very flat section of the body that we always kind of look out for. So we're going to go follow this 
and then along the back of that you'll notice that this is going to connect right here basically connects right here and then goes like this right so if we go back to our steve thanks bob we're gonna go back to steve what you're gonna see is this is basically the same thing so we're gonna be following the uh collarbone all the way up right that's exactly what i just drew this is that process here we're gonna flip this dude around and this is the back of that shoulder blade you can see it sticking and poking through the muscles that's what we want to be finding and on this side you'll get to see that kind of shape there so seeing those side by side of the scan of the person and the scan of not a scan but the model you can kind of understand maybe a little bit better about what it is when we start walking in our things that we're going to be looking for uh, other things we're going to start looking for is going to be the, the pelvis you can see that the pelvis on both sides this side is the this side is the cutaway side right so you're going to see into the body but this side is not let's get these arms off here because they're not super important right now but you can see that those divots right here is where the bone is so muscles don't go over bone they connect to bone right so what that means is when you see uh an overlap like even in an arm or something like this uh when you see a divot or you see a valley that's often the bones diving in to connect to the bone um the muscles diving in to connect to the bone i think i said that correctly how much is steve i believe steve is in the 150 range let's take a look I'll call it anatomy tools. There's several of these. So the cheapest you're looking at is 230 for this person. This is the one that I had, which is not this price when I bought it. But there's a bunch of these, and they also uh, depend on the scale. So this is a 12 inch, and this is the 23 inch. So I think uh, these are the ones that are really good. And you can get some different ones. They're great to have, worth investing in, uh, but they are great. So that's kind of what we're looking at first. So knowing that we have this guy here, we're also going to see the sternum here. The sternum is going to be kind of a, a two-planed piece. You can see it, the first piece is here and the first piece is here, right? Uh, you can't really see it so well on Steve. They're kind of flat. But basically, the, we're looking for the rib cage in general, um, what the shape of that rib cage is, which we can see here. these when we start blocking in our anatomy are going to be important things and there's one other really large i mean there's obviously our spine is going to go here and notice that there's a large divot which means there's muscles connecting to the spine that's going to be having these muscles that basically wrap all the way up right and around this point in the body is where the trapezius is going to be which is a really large muscle and it kind of goes around the c7 vertebrae which is right here and you, that's this large triangular shape is going to be the trapezius which is absent on this side of steve but you can see it here here where there's multi facets to it so there's going to be this large one that's going to connect up on top and then of course there's going to be this other one that's going to connect all the way down to the middle of the back so there's one really large kind of triangular or uh, kite shaped muscle that sits on the back and uh, those are the big things that we're going to focus on for that cool all right thank you steve thank you bob we're gonna put bob and steve away and we're gonna put them like this we're gonna go back to our relatively or very tubular man all right so what were you we looking for again we said we were looking for this so let's start blocking in these shapes uh the amount of topology i have right here is probably enough to get started but it's not going to be enough to really uh finalize things uh if you are interested in character something i do recommend uh is buying scans there's a lot of scans 3d scan store is a great one uh, but the scans are really great but exactly what we just did here is it's it's a person it's a real person that they've scanned and so it's important it's a great way to like actually see what that shape looks like on a model it can be difficult when you're looking just at our steves to look at a character or a person and say like i wonder what you look like with skin on 
right? That's kind of a thing that's that can be challenging. But when you see a uh, model like this and a scan, uh, you can kind of go over them and say like, oh, okay, I, now I'm on also understanding what that looks like from a modeling standpoint so that all the characters don't look like they're you know, either crazy ripped or uh, crochets. Yeah, there's much cheaper ones if you want to get one that's cheaper that are 10 or 12 inches tall. Um, so, you know, I think it's worth investing in one, absolutely. But I don't think you need to break the bank, especially if you can't afford it. Like, buy a scan. You can get a, a skeleton scan for probably 20 bucks, and that'll be just as good for what you need. So I'm going to exaggerate that. This is basically going to be the um, 7 boy seven but the c7 here and this is going to be here i'm adding just basically this almost like a collar right but you can kind of see where that's coming in from with our guy here and i also like to do this this is a view that people don't really think about when you're uh, evaluating things is um the top view why is the top view important everybody looks at this view they look at this view they look at this view right but nobody ever looks at this view sorry bob why is this important this is important because this is showing you not just the shape of the front and the back but they're showing you the top the top shows you the depth and it shows you the, the angles and the draft a lot of people don't realize like look at from the front this looks like it's just a line for the collarbones right i'm gonna go back to making this a little larger this is just a line for the collarbones from the top you look at this it's basically a, a handlebar shape. It's a wishbone shape. So when we go to our dude, we'll hide his head. A poly group for that maybe, so we can quickly do this in the future. Hmm. When we start making our shapes we want to mimic that so you can push this in and push this out and it gets it to be much less uh boring and more accurate as well so let's start with that we're also going to block out this rib cage this base mesh has a pretty nice starting point for some of this stuff which is great excuse me all right so we're going to puff this out or pull these collarbones out a little bit so that we get that shape. And we're going to start building around some of this. And one, the number one thing that I see beginners do, I'm going to add a subdivision level here, uh, do, which is a mistake, is immediately start on the muscles. Immediately starting on the muscles. So this is what I see the average beginner do. And they come in and they say, okay, well, this is huge. And this is his shoulder. Right, and then this is going to be the, the chest. This is the shape of a chest, and this is the shape of the neck, and this is the shape of the bicep, and this is the shape of all these things. And you generally get what it's going to look like, right? And the rib cage is in here somewhere, and then the abs are in here somewhere. Um, but there's not a lot of thought into the muscles or where those things are connecting. And overlaps, which again, overlaps is a really key thing to form of how it's actually functioning. So without doing really big strokes like that, what I can do, start getting into this and saying, what attached, okay, we've got this here. It may not be the right size or the right shape, but we at least know where it is. Uh, and we've kind of evaluated it. What goes to it and how does it go to it? How does it attach? And so the easiest, one of the easier areas to start on is kind of the shoulder, just because it makes a little um, more sense because of all the overlaps and the first thing that we can do is actually get this chest piece here so we'll, we'll block in let's just put in an extra little bit of a sternum here right so this is the sternum there's all these ribs that are going in here and i believe it is the sixth rib one two three four five six somewhere around the sixth rib you're going to see the bottom of the chest up here or the pectoral up here kind of this shape this kind of square is shape and uh, what you do or what you need to know is that there's a couple different angles in which it's connecting because it connects all along 
this ridge and all along this ridge, which is important. It's not just this way and it's not just this way. So there's kind of two, uh, actually three facets because it also connects to the bottom as well. So the bottom ones go up. They all kind of continue to go this way. Right now, the, the key thing about that is it's actually going to the arm. If you know anything about working out or if you get into fitness or if, you, if that's something you're interested in, uh, I find that in my time when I was very active in fitness, I learned a lot about the body and what the body was doing. Uh, not so much anymore. I should probably focus on that. But noting that the, the chest specifically is, is a pushing muscle, right? It's pushing, so that means it takes the arm and pushes it forward. So it's actually pushing the arm. It's not connected to anything else except for just right here. What that means is I could mask this off. If I wanted to, I could I'll carve this in a little bit more. I could actually get some of these overlaps. Showing some of this overlap will make the model feel much more realistic. What I mean by overlap is being able to see the direction of where this is going. Even if I simplify the forms, I take away all the top level detail, saying that it's going underneath the shoulder, which is going to be here, right? And it's going attaching to the arm. So I want to see some of this will be a good starting point for us of those forms see where they're attaching now if we go over to our dudes right i'm going to move my keyboard because it keeps getting in the way all right you're not going to see me for a minute because we're just going to put steve right here and we're going to bring back our bob you can see that this clear line right here the you can kind of see the light focusing on that but you can see that it goes in and under underneath that direction right it's all kind of connecting the same way and there's a very clear divot right here and this is where there's not really anything connected on the chest right so when we look over here it's the same thing there's just this negative space in between where um, this bone you can feel it on yourself too it's right for me it's right here We want to do the same thing with our guy. So we know that all of this will be negative space. I like to use the clay buildup brush. You can use whatever brush it is that you like. And I like to kind of go slowly flowing in the direction. And this is usually the bottom head of the, the pectoral. And then you have the middle. They do all connect to slightly different pieces on the arm. We're not going to get into the specifics today. I don't want to make it look like it's abomination or anything, so we're going to give it a little bit of a bulk in here. It doesn't have this crazy sternum. So if you ever see like a you know a bodybuilder's chest or even probably this guy's chest. A divot again in a in anatomy typically a divot means that you have uh, muscles connecting to a bone so that's what this is so we can just kind of come in and I'm doing this a little more educational than i am like focusing on making the perfect sculpt but kind of get it in a way so that it feels like it's going in the right spot I gotta get this eye in my way focusing there and then we'll start focusing on these other ones the head of the shoulder has or the shoulder of the deltoid has three heads they don't pass they never pass the collarbone it, it doesn't work like that so it's only going to go up to the front it has a front head it has a side head and then it has a back head which actually goes all the way over here and it ends up typically at the front end of this 
shoulder so if we go to our scan guy again this is why i like using scans essentially we have this shape which connects all the way through here our middle and that's our front and if the bone of the arm is here it's connecting here key thing that we're looking for I made it a little exaggerated when I was doing that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carve into this a little bit we'll give it a little bit of bulk with the clay buildup brush you don't want to go crazy far down the arm look how it doesn't even really go past halfway but it also doesn't end here, which I think a lot of people get confused and it sometimes will feel just because this shape ends here, that the insertions are actually down here. Insertion meaning where it dives into the body, where it connects to the bone. Maybe I'll just use my carving brush here to just delineate that a little clearly, more clearly. I haven't really focused on any of these other muscles, and that's okay. We won't have a lot of time to do that. Note that the biceps go underneath all of this. So again, we'll go back to our scan man. See that this form is sitting on top of this form and this form. So this is going to go underneath that. We're just kind of blocking this all out. Now, we're losing some of the heroic stuff that we're adding when we start adding all these muscles, right? And so what we can pretty easily do is add that in the trapezius. This is a very common thing. It's basically these big muscles back here, right? We kind of showed those in a minute. This guy has a great set of them, so we're going to look at those. First off, look at the size of this shape. It's pretty large, right? Whereas ours is smaller. And then second, when we go in the front, so it's all the way over here. Connects all the way back here. So this is that shape. It has kind of two sections that go out this way and then go this way as well. It actually overlaps part of the... Uh, shoulder blade let's take a look at that can't get my keyboard out of the way there we go so you can kind of see how that's working we have our uh, connection here right kind of going out there's this one muscle and then there's this upper muscle which goes and connects now again this we got to go to our favorite view top view see how far forward that goes i think a lot of people don't necessarily understand that from the very beginning i'm going to mimic taking off his head by taking off this guy's actual head and you'll kind of see this is exactly the same the lighting is awful but there we go you see the same thing where it wraps down and back onto the top of the collarbone, which I think most people don't, again, don't recognize that it comes all the way up here, which if you look to the front of the character, I haven't moved my finger, is here. So it's a really, really large muscle that a lot of people don't think about. It's a very important one. If you look at superheroes, this is a very big, important muscle to superheroes because they need to be big and muscular, and this is one that adds a lot to their uh, their silhouette and their shape and their size. What does that mean for our guy? He doesn't have this really. You kind of see this shape here, but basically it's adding some stuff that's going to come in here. Symmetry on
the kind of the top head. This is more of a <laughs> this has definitely turned into more of a instructional lesson than it is like let's just lay in some anatomy on this character, but hopefully that's all right. It comes all the way down here, and then it'll continue. Now there's another set of muscles that are going to go through here. Another set of muscles that are going to go here. Right. This is where we can start blocking all this stuff in. So this isn't the best anatomy sculpt I've ever done, but you'll kind of see where it goes from the beginning point to we can start blocking these in, and then we can begin refining them. That was the, the quick things I just put in there. We've got some initial lay-ins for a lot of those big pieces. And then going down here, we need to put our shoulder blade in. Key. Very, very key shape, very flat shape as well. All right, we have about 15 minutes, so I'm going to kind of try to burn through some of this other stuff. I'm going to start adding some contrast. What that means is right now I've just been sculpting on top of it. I'm going to start digging into things as well. So I'm going to push in here, for example. Uh, sometimes it's not always about sculpting. Some people uh, are additive sculptors, some people are subtractive sculptors, and some people are both. What that means is if you think about it in a traditional medium, additive sculptor is clay. You start with wire and you add more clay to it. Subtractive sculptor is somebody who starts with stone and subtracts to get to the final thing. In a digital medium, we can do both, but there still tends to be people who follow one train of thought. I am more of an additive sculptor. Then I like to cut in, so let's say I come in here, I'm going to add some stuff in, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut really heavily. That was a miss. I'm going to cut and do that. You can use this Damien standard or the Dam standard brush as a really great brush to start defining regions as well. Whereas before, you know, let's say we go back to this base, head. Looks like he's almost a Ferengi. Uh, we're going to hide that just because I could also have come in and said okay you know this is where you're, I'm just using this sketch brush this is where the ribs are going to be this is where the chest is going to be right this is where the and I'll almost carve it up like this this is another really good way to do that this is where this is going to go this is going to go here basically use it as a sketch and say this is where all of these muscles are going to live right and then what we can do with this I'll do it on the other one now that we're done at this point we can say okay there's gonna be some pelvis pelvic muscles in here they're gonna kind of come in here or look at our people yep these are going to go here. There's going to be a large muscle that goes here. So you can actually just start drawing it in, right? And that can actually be very helpful for you to uh, to know where things are going to go and to also plan on your uh, landmarks and, and just generally the flow of a muscle. That little sketch that we just did is kind of going from there and putting in a little bit of the sketches, which will help us block in the direction that we're going to be going. Uh, and now what we can use that is sort of as like a template or a baseline for us to continue with. We have about 10 minutes left in the stream, so I'm going to try to get through some of this relatively quickly, but hopefully make it still informational for you, uh, especially if you're getting into anatomy or this is something you're interested in. Um, some things that most people don't know, for example, we get into the arms. Most people think about arms, they think about somebody with big arms or muscular arms, and they always think about the bicep, right? The, the muscle right here, the, the classic strongman muscle that everybody thinks of. And that means that I see a lot of mistakes in anatomy studies with people having massive biceps on their characters to make their arm, to hopefully make their arms feel big. Uh, that is actually the wrong way to do it. Uh, what you'll notice is if I pull off Steve's arm here uh, and you look at this, the bicep is this, is this muscle here. This is the side view, the inside view specifically. 
but it's actually here you'll see the size of the tricep is quite large uh it's actually uh i'd say it's like two-thirds it's slightly larger than uh, the bicep is and it's composed of three heads so uh, if you look at people with big arms or big muscle superheroes yeah they may have big biceps but often it's because of the size of their triceps that makes them look really large so even if i made this guy have a really huge arm just absurdly proportioned right now his arm still doesn't feel big it's still it's this muscle right here it's gonna make the arm feel really large also uh, comes around the front as well adds the depth and the thickness to it the tricep is the biggest muscle in your arm and that's what makes your arm feel big so it's not just about the classic beach muscle that everybody thinks about it's actually about all these other muscles so something to note um, the bicep goes underneath all of these arms these muscles all these arms all these muscles in the arm there's sort of a middle running uh, muscle here as well as kind of an invisible one and they connect forearm you have a, a lot of muscles that run up basically think of it like they run upwards from the thumb all the way up this way and you're going to see, especially if you look at it on this one, this is the, uh, I'll go to this. So this is the inside of the fist rotating. You can see all those muscles bunching up and diving into, diving into the tricep here. So this is up on the upper arm, which means that all these muscles here this is how you get this overlap this is an important aspect to understand in anatomy is that it's never uh, you know the, the classic thing that I think you see people think about is like balloons like that these balloons are making the same shapes over and over and over and that's not at all how it is it's actually this overlap the series of overlaps of how the muscles are, are gonna function Good thing to note there and then i guess as we get a little bit further down because we got a, only seven minutes left in the stream uh this is an important area if you're interested in anatomy to focus on quite a bit how this all functions is pretty complicated and it's worth uh, studies alone to do that the latissimus is this large wing-like muscle this is also a, a muscle for superheroes that makes them look quite large from the front or from the back uh, this muscle uh pulls down your arm so if you ever do pull-ups you know, you're pulling down and you're doing this kind of a motion. Uh, this is what you can think for that. Your biceps help you out, but this is the big muscle that's going to do that. So because they do that, that means they connect up into the armpit here. So you're actually going to see this sort of a shape. Scan man's got his arms down, but you'll probably be able to see it. This shape is right here. Let's see what this guy's arms look like. His bicep is here, and this is his tricep. You can see the size and the shape of that. And the uh, you can see this little divot here. But here, this is where these muscles are starting to roll over the forearm. This. Our guy, this little little silhouette right there, is that muscle, and that's part of what adds the, the size of a character to a front view. Plenty to do on this, and again, this is becoming more has become more instructional, but that's okay. Uh, the pelvis is a really complicated piece, but basically, what you're going to have is uh, 
series of like one smaller well it's actually the larger one but this is basically where your belly button will be will be here one larger ab another smaller one and a smaller one right this is kind of your four pack and a six pack and next to this is going to be your obliques these are your muscles that are on the side that's these love handles what they're called this actual cutout in the in the silhouette right here leak shape this is what make it so you can twist so you can turn your body right so this is when you see this if you add these types of shapes you'll see that even though it feels a little awkward to do it front you're like oh okay i see that that just feels a little bit more natural and then this is where we get into all of the trunk and all this stuff here is also relatively complicated but the key key thing to note uh if you look at it on the side of the body uh his hand is kind of in the way but we'll hide this and we'll probably head out for the day is there's a divot right here it feels weird and you probably feel it in yourself if you kind of stand up or just kind of feel the side of your body I'm kind of poking in the side of my body right now. You'll find a really, you'll find your hip bone, uh, but it's in that divot. That's what this is right here. This is your great trochanter. And that's basically, if we look at our, our guy here, you're going to see that divot. There it is, right? That's the bone that I'm talking about. If we flip it over to the cutaway side, you'll actually get to see that this is where a lot of the muscles in the butt and the leg attach. And note that there's these little muscles here, your butt muscles on the side and all the way around connect from your pelvis to that. And that's what makes it so that you can actually uh, bend, like basically you can bend your leg out. That's what that does, right? So uh, all these on this side are also going to continue uh, into that. And then they also continue down into the bone itself here. Uh, but muscles, when they, they, they can only do one function, and that is they can only contract. So when you see the direction that they go, they can only pull in that way, right? So what that basically means for us when we get into our quick sculpt of this is there's going to be the bone is here and everything else around it, uh, at least for the butt, is going to connect to it. So this is going to basically kind of look like this. It's going to be really quick and fast, but you'll see that that is a very fast way to basically make a butt is to point everything to that great trochanter. What the size and shape of those are depends on the person, depends on the, you know, whatever, but that is kind of how it's all functions. You essentially make a donut right there. Fun. And you have your other muscles that are going to go all the way up. These are connecting from your pelvis, basically uh, down into your knees. We're down in these areas. So you're going to have a really large one here for your legs. Right? Some other smaller ones that are going to go here. The ones that are going to run through here. And then a side one. This as well. And even though I'm not spending a lot of time on it, you can kind of get the gist of what those... Um, how that works. Can I show Steve's lower back? Sure. That's probably better lighting. So these uh, white ones have fascia. The fascia is a sheet of like a protective sort of sheet that covers your muscles. Those are your, I think they're called spinae erector or something, but basically spinal erectors, they go all the way up here. And these are connecting to your pelvis. So your pelvis has a ton, all this bone, this whole ridge of bone, which is the top of that, uh, is where your spinal erectors connect, your latissimus is connecting into this, your, uh, all of your buttocks is connecting into this, and then a lot of this stuff even in the, uh, the leg is connecting to your, all within your pelvis. So if you ever look at the shape of a pelvis, you notice that there's a, there's a lot of bone in there. Uh, that's because you're connecting to a lot of muscles over there.
All right. We did a little anatomy lesson today, impromptu anatomy lesson, which has been fun. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining. It is 1 o'clock, so I'm going to kind of wrap this up and say thank you so much for joining today. Um, it's been fun to get it back into this, explore some sculpting, and kind of chat with you guys about um, – you know, anatomy and upcoming projects and Eurovision and fun things. Um, and yeah, so for season two, which is where we are for Art Chain, we will be continuing uh, Wednesday mornings, uh, Pacific time from 10 to 1. And hoping to have some some guests for you guys lined up soon, which we'll be promoting. So check out our social media channels. Uh, and don't forget that this Friday, uh, in two days from now, we will be having a, a conversation with Alex Alvarez. So actually the founder of... The founder of the school, the founder of Nomen, oh, hi. Uh, he will be uh, having a conversation on Friday from 11 to 2 today. So come and check that out and you'll get to uh, learn about Alex, learn about Nomen. He's an awesome speaker and it's always fun to watch him. So check that out this Friday uh, from 11 to noon uh, Pacific. Cool. All right, everybody. We'll have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend and stay safe out.